As you may or may not know, my wife and I just got back from Vegas. It was a great trip. We ate, we drank, we had a blast. But then we got home and looked at the credit card, and uh, I gotta say, it doesn't matter how much fun you're having, 25 bucks for a drink is a ripoff. Frickin' Vegas. I hate getting ripped off, and so do the lads over at Harry's. They spent years watching the razor blade companies rip people off and said, No more! Not all heroes wear capes, my friends, and they want to prove that they're legit by offering you hot dogs a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. I've been telling you about them for months, and I'm genuinely proud to have Harry's as a sponsor of this show. I wasn't kidding. The plastic, futuristic-looking crap razors you get at the store are overpriced, and they're poor quality. Harry's blades are crisp, clean, and classy. They're the kind of razor you'd expect your grandpa to have on his bathroom counter. And most importantly, they work. Shave after shave, they're so smooth, they're precise. I used to go through the crappy store blades all the time, but Harry's are built to last. And they're not just better quality than the other names, they're more affordable. And they deliver. Just set your schedule, and for as little as two bucks, new blades, shaving creams, lotions, everything you need, right to your door when you need it. I genuinely cannot think of a reason not to try Harry's. And I'm not just saying this because they're sponsors. They're the best shaving supplies I've ever used. Try them out. And if you're not happy, your shave's on them. And unlike the other subscriptions, they're really easy to cancel if you want to, too, which is a nice bonus, but... Believe me, you're, you're not going to want to cancel. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game. It is my retro gaming podcast where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and we geek out about the games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And this week it is episode 225, which means it's another one of our legendary revisited episodes where we take another look at a game we covered back in the earliest days of the show when we had even less of an idea of what we were doing than we do now. And this time around, we're turning to the game that we covered all the way back on Remember the Game number 19, one of my favorite RPGs, one of my favorite SNES titles, and just one of my favorite games of all time. It's my beloved, precious Earthbound. Uh, I fucking love this game. Although, admittedly, when we got into talking about it this week for the show, I, I was a little bit more critical than I intended to be. I don't... I still love it. You know, it's still a great game. It's going to get a great score. I think maybe the issue with the episode this week was that I I've been blowing smoke up Ness's ass for four years on this podcast now, and I felt like this was a chance to maybe vent about a couple of the little things that I don't love about Earthbound. And you know, it's like it's it's like a beautiful car that just has a couple of scratches on the side, and it's like still a great car, but I see the fucking scratches. Except instead of scratches, it's fucking a horrible inventory system. But of course, you know, after the bad stuff, we do get into the good. We talk about the graphics, the music, the combat, the lack of random encounters, which alone makes this game legendary in my opinion, and all the other weird little intricacies that make Earthbound so fucking special. Oh, and that messed up final boss with a name that I don't know how to say. Gygus? 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 I don't know. Anyways, uh, my little brother Josh. My, I should say my younger brother because he is substantially bigger than me but my younger brother josh is uh, my guest on the show this week we both played this game like fucking crazy as kids we both still play it regularly as adults so i thought he'd make the perfect guest perfect guest part of me to come on and revisit it uh, we do get into some spoilers nothing too wild uh, we really just bounce all over the place bitch about the stuff we don't like while also praising this game to high hell because while it isn't perfect it's goddamn close. And we'll get to all that in just a minute because speaking of something that may not be perfect, but it's really, really close, it's time for another edition of the Remember the Game infamous intro. Dun, 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 dun. 
And if you're new to the podcast, welcome aboard. Consider this your warning. Our intros are kind of long these days, but they're fun. You know, it's like video game talk and all kinds of cool shit. And they're not nearly as confusing as that goddamn monkey cave is in Earthbound. If, and if you know, you know. Uh, but if you do want to skip it, you're just here for Earthbound talk. Go about 30 minutes up the road. You hear the music. You're good to go. I have to get my plugs out of the way because as we determined last week, it's how I keep the bills on around here that's officially the saying now uh we have merchandise we have all kinds of shit hoodies t-shirts coffee mugs posters all rocking fucking really cool art uh drawn by my man joe from 4545creative.com you can find all of our merchandise at remember the game podcast.com if you're interested it's a great way to support the show and of course if you don't like clothes that's fine you can always support us on patreon it's about the best deal in the history of the world for two bucks a month you get two additional shows every single week you get exclusive acts except maybe the last week between christmas and new year's i'm, I'm still probably going to put them out but i admittedly might take a couple of days off for the holidays but just about every week you get two additional shows uh you get exclusive access to my gaming news show game patch every friday where i look at all the biggest news in modern video games i add in my opinions and some profanity some sales picks all that kind of stuff uh, and then expansion pass goes live every thursday and it's a different show every week we do game rankings we look back at characters consoles franchises there's some comedy episodes there's a ton of modern game reviews over there all spoiler free uh this past week on expansion pass it was the final episode of the month so our patrons decided what we were going to be talking about and christmas gaming memories steamrolled the poll so i shared some of my favorite christmas gaming stories i read a bunch of yours and it was it was a pretty wholesome uh, episode although i will recommend not listening to that episode with your kids and some people wrote in and said who listens to your show with their kids i agree any of you that listen to this show with your kids you're you're you are irresponsible parents but I don't have kids, so I can't judge it. And I know for a fact some people do listen to this show with their kids. So if you do, just skip that Christmas episode because there's some uh, inside baseball being talked over there. But either way, uh, as is becoming a tradition, here is a sneak peek with no inside baseball of last week's episode of Expansion Pass, Christmas Gaming Memories. And I remember every single time we would go to the video store to rent video games I, the first place i went was mario 3 ripping over to the wall looking for mario 3 they had a whole wall of them and all you would do is just browse through all those yellow boxes and just pray there was a case behind one and it, there very rarely was anytime i got to rent it i lost my mind but i'd always go there i'd be crushed when they didn't have it and then i'd go rent Mega Man or something like that but all i wanted was mario 3 and i can i can see it in my head ripping that wrapping paper off that box and, it, and I knew it was the NES size box. And as soon as I started peeling that corner and I saw that yellow, that fucking, I don't know why they went with yellow, but fuck me, did it work? And I remember seeing that yellow box and like almost crying. I was so happy to finally have my own copy of Super Mario Brothers 3. And I remember Josh and I playing that game all day. Nothing, nothing, nothing else mattered. I remember leaving the NES on during Christmas dinner and just hoping that my mom wouldn't notice because she told us we weren't allowed to do that. So that's now available on our archives. And this week for Expansion Pass 139, I'm going to try an episode that I've been wanting to do for a while now. And we're going to call it Adam, Have You Ever Played? Because not a week goes by that for blowing in the cartridge, I don't get a few people that write in just saying, Hey, Adam, have you ever played insert game whatever here uh so i thought we would just try to tackle a bunch of them there's over a hundred games that have been submitted by our patrons right now and i'm going to try to reply to everyone i hope this episode doesn't suck because admittedly just flipping through the comments there's going to be a lot of no i have not but even if i haven't played it if i've heard of it if i have any thoughts on it i'll try my best to at least you know if there's always been that game you're wondering about i'll answer a whole bunch of questions about whether or not i've ever played them so again two bucks gets you two additional shows every week instant access to over 250 bonus podcasts right there on your phone ad free you can listen to them at your leisure and you also get access to our disc you get a chance to vote in our Patreon poll every month. You get the ability to submit comments to be read on all of our podcasts. You can DM with me all you want. And you get a shout out and get to hear me mispronounce your name like I'm about to do to most of these people. A huge thank you to our newest Patreons. Marcus Mendoza, Lord Longrod Von Hugendong II, which I think is a fake fucking name if I'm being honest. Ross Mueller, Dayton Hamilton, Ashlyn Morris, Phil, William Campbell, Eli Gonzalez, Charlie G, Porter Smith, Jace Carrada. That's a cool name. Avery Je Gellerson, Gellerson. I am the Johnny 55. James pronounced this last name Farku Harson. I hope I said that right. And Dink Shot Champion. 
We've needed some more dink around here. Uh, thank, you, <laughs> thank you all so much for the support. And welcome to Remember the Game Industries. You can find all that at patreon.com slash remember the game. And finally, the last plug, you can find me on Twitch. Admittedly, I haven't been streaming much lately. I'm kind of busy for the holidays. But I do get on there whenever I can. Twitch.tv slash remember the game if you want to come by and see my stupid face and blah, 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 blah. That's enough blowing myself. Let's blow some of you by blowing in some cartridges. It is our opening segment here on the show. I read a few comments and questions from our Patreons, usually gaming related, but not always. And we call this segment Blowing in the Cartridge. Hey. He blows all right. He blows big time. That's it, honey. Get into the spirit. <laughs> Let's blow our first blower this week. Is Super Mario World is not as good as Adam says. I fucking hate that name. And they said, Adam, let's put you on the spot. You can keep one, remake one, and delete one. Coffee, Molly, and Canada. And for the record, I'm assuming that they mean Molly, my dog, and not the drugs. Uh, so I'm going to keep Molly, of course, because uh, it's my dog. I love my dog more than literally anything on this planet. So Molly is the keep for sure. I'll remake Canada, and I'll just clean up all the fighting everybody's doing because it fucking sucks. And I also uh, would make it a little bit warmer. And then I guess I'll delete coffee because as much as I like coffee... Uh, I like Canada more, and as much as I like Canada, I love my dog way more than Canada. So there's there's your answer. And if it's the drug, if you're talking the drug, then I'll keep Molly, remake coffee, and just make myself another cup and delete the drug because I only smoke pot. And I'm trying not to fucking do that anymore, but everyone keeps asking me about it because I talk about it, and now it's hard to quit. Anyway, thank you, Super Mario World is not as good as I says. Michael Matthews wrote in and said, Hey, Adam, just thought I'd chime in to say I finally got Slay the Spire on the Steam sale. Can't wait to dive in. Any tips? Fuck yeah, Michael. Welcome to the team. Welcome to the cult of Slay the Spire. And if you don't know, if you're new to the show, it's the unofficial official game of the podcast. I've been beating the drum of Slay the Spire for about three years now. It is a roguelike card game. You don't have to build a deck like Magic where you take it in every time. Every time you play, you build a brand new deck as you play. It is awesome. It's one of my absolute favorite games of all time. I recommend it to everybody. A ton of you have been uh, converted thanks to my constant preaching of it. As far as any tips, Michael, I would say just expect to lose a lot. And don't get mad if you do. It's designed to be, like, I've played a lot of games of it, and I still probably lose, like, I don't know, 7 out of 8, 9 out of 10 runs. Um, it's not a, you know, that, that would be my main piece of advice. If you're jumping in, don't let it piss you off. If you start out and you're losing all the time and also don't fucking take every goddamn card it gives you like at the beginning, do it because you're learning how the cards work. But once you get playing, sometimes less is more. I'd rather have a deck of like 15 cards that all just hammer together and work really well together over a deck of like 50 cards. And I'm never getting the ones I need when I need them. But the main tip is just don't get mad. And just stick with it, all right? Congra uh, congratulations on joining the team. Good luck. Let me know how it goes. And for the rest of you, fucking check out Slay the Spire. It's awesome. And it's on Game Pass if you're over there. Uh, where was I here? Pinball Mage wrote in and said, Hey, Mr. Blank, would you ever consider doing an interview again? Like when you interviewed Nicholas Pickles? You could interview Johnny Arcade or a contestant on Beat the Geeks. Hell, even someone like John Tron or someone as internet famous as you. I don't know if I'd consider myself internet famous. I'd consider myself like F minus internet famous. Um, I would love to do more interviews. The big thing is just finding somebody that I think would make an interesting interview that is interested in talking to me that I could hold a conversation with. If you don't know, if you go back to the archives, there's, I think, three interview episodes. We've done Nicholas Pickles, the former host of Video and Arcade Top 10 here in Canada, which is one of my favorite episodes ever because this show wouldn't exist without... If you're wondering why I do It's Letter Time, It's Letter Time, it's, it'll be explained during that episode because I stole it from Nicholas Pickles. Uh, we interviewed uh, Doug Walsh, who spent uh, a lot of his life writing player's guides. Back in the day, it was a really cool episode, and we've interviewed Summoning Salt, uh, who, if you don't know, is a YouTuber who is very well known and a very prominent YouTuber when it comes to speedruns, and we talked about speedruns, and that was a lot of fun. I reached out to the dude that had created Diddy Kong, and we were talking about coming on the show, and then it just never lined up, uh, and I have reached out to the Angry Video Game Nerd, but that didn't go anywhere, and I don't expect that it will, so uh, never say never. If the right opportunity comes up, I'm not opposed. I like doing those interview episodes. They're a nice change of pace. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to doing one if the right guest came along. So never say never. Uh, makeshift Money wrote in and said, can Superman outrun the Flash? Uh, sure. 
Uh, Boy Who Trades. <laughs> Shout out to me because that reference. Boy Who Trades wrote in and said, have you been playing Castle Crashers by yourself? You have to play it with a full party. That's the best way to experience it. I have been playing it by myself. And I'll get into that when I talk about the games I'm playing. I'm playing Castle Crashers for an upcoming episode of the show. I fucking love it. I have had a ton of people ask if they could, you know, if I want to play with them. And the answer is yes. I want to play with every single one of you. It's obviously, I can't play with every single one of you. Um, one of the perks to our Discord is sometimes I'll go in. I mean, if you consider playing video games with me a perk which i think is very loose that's a loose term for a perk uh, i do go into our discord sometimes and post looking for people to play with and over the next week or two once my comedy schedule slows down just a hint uh, i will play some castle crashes with some members of the community to get ready for that episode i'm really enjoying that game a lot man i wanted to play in the 360 a day so bad and i just didn't have any friends that would play it with me so i didn't play it and i'm kicking myself for missing out uh justin combustion Wrote, that sounds like a wrestling name, like just incredible. I love it. Uh, hey, Adam wrote in and said, hey, Adam, love the podcast. Curious how you feel about the Harry Potter franchise. And if you're looking forward to the upcoming Hogwarts Legacy game, the previews look pretty killer. Thanks and keep up the great work, buddy. Oh, thanks, Justin. Um, I don't mean to poo-poo on any Harry Potter parades, but I'm just going to let everyone. I have never read or seen anything Harry Potter. And I know I've actually like my buddy Tim even hooked me up with the audiobook. Uh, the audiobooks and I just I, I started one of them and then I was like I got busy and I never went back I really would like to check out the books at some point because I like to read and I'd like to see what all the hubbub is about but as of now I would say I do think the Hogwarts Legacy game looks legit and I think anyone that's excited about it is right to be excited about it I don't see myself touching it because I just don't know Bob Kiss about Harry Potter so that's sorry I'm sorry to what are you called Potters potty pottyites Potterites I don't know what you I don't know what Harry Potter Harry's I'm not sure what Harry Potter fans call themselves but unfortunately I'm not amongst your ranks right now maybe someday I never saw Star Wars until a couple years ago and now I love Star Wars so you never know uh Shaw someone wrote in and said what up Mr. Blank I was watching the Michael Bay TMNT movies a few days ago and I just wanted to say it's awesome to know that you like and enjoyed them too I'm glad I'm not alone because I liked and enjoyed both movies and I would actually like a third one with more Baxter Stockman in it seeing him turn into the fly would warm my nostalgic heart anywho thanks for all your hard work and keep up the shawsome outstanding work my friend cheers uh, thank you, Shaw. Someone, I appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, I, we Michael Bay Ninja Turtles fans need to stick together. If you don't know, I'm a huge Ninja Turtles fan. I like the Michael Bay movies. I think the second one is better than the first one. I don't think either one is great. Neither one's going to touch the 1990 movie. Neither one's going to be fucking confused for Shawshank Redemption or The Godfather or something like that. Um, but I like them both, especially the second one. I think the fan service is out the ass in the second one. My only beef, and I guess quick spoilers for the second Michael Bay movie. So skip 15 seconds. I'll do it really fast. Uh, my only beef is the, we never really come up with the thing, the ooze that could make them human. I think they should have gone through with that and made themselves human and then gone back into turtles at the end. It would have been cool to see them as actual humans. Uh, but no, I like the designs. I like the character. I love that Bebop and Rocksteady and Krang and the Technodrome and everything showed up. I agree. I would love a third one with either Baxter Stockman as a fly or the Rat King. I always thought the Rat King would make a great movie. But I'm on your side, Shaw someone. I like those movies. Haters gonna hate. Anyway. Uh, and then finally, as you all know, it's letter time. It's letter time. And Nicola wrote in. And listen, I, I am certainly not trying to... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Disparage anybody from writing in with your personal stories. I get these almost every week now or pretty close. I don't always read them on the show. Please don't think that I like pick and choose which ones I'm going to read. I just don't always read the comments that just write in and say, hey, Adam, I really enjoy your podcast. You've helped me through a tough time because while I'm grateful for them, nobody wants to listen to me just blow smoke up my own ass here on the show. Uh, but this, this message really hit home to me because someone that I'm close to is um, not doing very well health-wise. Uh, so this message hit home. Nicola, Nicola wrote in and said, Hey, Mr. Blank, I just wanted to share a little story about how your awesome content has helped me get through the single hardest time in my life. Around this time last year, my wife and I were admitted to the hospital for her leukemia, which would in fact be for the last time. After a two-month battle, I unfortunately lost the love of my life. Every day was a grueling test and a seemingly never-ending gauntlet, but that was when I stumbled onto your podcast. I practically lived at the hospital for two months, and when I was done taking care of her, I would tune into your Remember the Game episodes, and it would truly just make me smile how i could just relate to you through all the aspects and the comical relief really made a light in the huge shadow looming over me i adore your ideas and thought process if there is a time where you were wondering about your work please know that it definitely can impact people keep doing what you excel at sir and thank you i am forever a fan and i appreciate all your content sorry to all for putting a damper on the day number one mallow fan nicola first of all you had to throw that fucking that's such a i mean okay first of all 
obviously my sincerest condolences um, for your loss. And I think I can say that I'm, I think I can safely say that on behalf of the community, minus a couple of fucking losers that'll bitch about it, but they're idiots. Uh, so our condolences for your loss. And thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you for the kind words. Uh, I just was going to quickly light you up for saying you're the number one Mallow fan. It's easy to be number one when you're the only goddamn fan in the fucking group. Fuck. I hate Mallow. What a little white fart cloud. I hate that guy. Um, Listen, I do get messages like this sometimes. People just saying, you know, I, you know, I lost my job or somebody's sick or I'm just stressed out. It's a tough time and your show has really helped me uh, just take my mind off my problems and stay positive. And uh, I, listen, I just want to say, and, I, and this isn't pandering. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I'm going through a lot of shit away from the microphone right now and it's stuff I won't talk about on here other than I've, I've let some people know that, you know, I think you guys know something is happening. That's as far as I'm going to go. And I appreciate that you've all respected my privacy and not asked for any more details because they're not coming. Um, but I just want you all to know it's a two way street. Uh, I started the show four and a half years ago. And I can't believe it's been four and a half years. And, uh, I never thought anyone would listen. That's why I used to always say, if you want to come on the show, let me know. And now I get messages all the time. I, I can't get everybody on the show. I never thought anyone would listen. I never thought I thought I'd do the show for like a year and then I just stopped. I just figured it'd be a way for me to learn how to edit audio and uh, and maybe become a little bit better comedian. And now it's become my life. Comedy's my side hustle. And every time I get stressed out or the world starts beating me down or I think about what we have going on uh, away from the microphone, uh, I can pick up my phone and there's just countless messages from you, you geeks just wanting to talk video games or break balls or talk about you the show or whatever. Um it's very humbling to me when you, when you folks tell me that the show helps you and uh, I'm grateful for those messages and I appreciate you uh, letting the show into your lives and, and helping you get through some times and just please never underestimate the impact you've had on my life. It is a two way street. All right. We're symbiotic. One of us is the venom symbiote and one of us is Eddie Brock and together we're keeping each other. We're going to keep each other alive. All right. So thank you all so much. And again, Nicola, thank you for sharing that. I'm sincerely sorry for your loss. I hope you're doing okay. And, uh, fuck, fuck Mallow. That's all. Fuck Mallow. That's all the submissions this week, everybody. Thank you so much. We're going to move on. Uh, let's get to our smash hit segment, the official game show of remember the game industries. You know what it is. It's play one, remake one, erase one. And a huge thank you to Classic Concentration from the NES for unknowingly providing us with the theme music for the show. The rules are simple. You know them. Every week I give our patrons three retro video games. They can play one as it was released. They can remake one as a new modern game. And the third game is just a race from time forever. And as always, there are no wrong answers, but there is a right one. We'll get there in just a minute. Uh, this week we're talking about an SNES RPG with Earthbound. The problem is I've already put most of the heavy hitters, the Final Fantasies, the Chrono Triggers, Earthbound, Super Mario RPG... I've put them in these hot seats so many times before. I wanted to change it up, so I went with three quote-unquote lesser-known SNES RPGs. We have Breath of Fire 2, Illusion of Gaia, Gaia, Gaia? I think it's Gaia. And Lufia, Lufia? I don't know how to say any of these fucking names. 28% um, of you voted to play Breath of Fire 2, remake Illusion of Gaia, and erase Lufia, Lufia? Fuck, I hate that. Uh, admittedly, I've played none of these. I know next to nothing about them, so I'm picking blind this week. I have reasoning. You'll hear what it is. Uh, I'll, let's see what a few of you had to say, and then I'll tell you what the right answer is. Old School Yoshi. Wrote in and said, play Gaia because that game is perfect as it is. Remake Breath of Fire 2, even though I just played through it a month ago and had a great time. I think the translation could be improved. And even being remade in the style of Breath of Fire 3 would be awesome. I loved Lufia 2, but... I, <laughs> fuck, I don't know how to say it. I'm just going to keep saying it like that. I love Lufia 2, but I simply have more nostalgia for Breath of Fire. And the original Lufia was just meh. So I assume that's what you're erasing. Sound logic. I like it. Play one because you think it's good. Remake one because you think you need some work. Erase the one you like the least. I that's See, that's how you fucking play, old school Yoshi. I may hate your dinosaur self, but I appreciate that you play by the rules. Michael Mathis, one of our diehard RPG fans. I knew you'd pop up. Wrote in and say, play Breath of Fire 2. This is a solid RPG. You have some variety, good story, and it holds up today. Remake Lufia. Lufia 1 was good, but it wasn't up to snuff compared to Lufia 2, which is amazing. So I'd make 1 like 2, and you'd have one of the top RPGs for the SNES. And then Erase Illusion of Gaia. It's a good game, but it has one flaw. It's not Breath of Fire 2 or a perfectly made, remade Lufia. I sound all right. Fair enough. But now Jeffrey Mathis, the, the I want to. I'm reading both of your comments this week because I'm just hoping to start a fight in the in the Mathis household leading into the holidays. Jeffrey disagrees. 
Jeffrey wrote in and said, play Breath of Fire 2, which is a good, fun, retro RPG to play today. And so there you go. You both agreed on playing Breath of Fire. Uh, but then Jeffrey said it's a better game than Lufaya 1. Remake Illusion of Gaia because it'd be a lot of fun to see what it could do with updated graphics in a system. And then erase Lufaya. Lufaya 1 was good, but it doesn't really stand out in any way. And Lufaya 2 was by far the better one to play anyway. So one of you is remaking Lufaya, Lufaya, whatever the fuck it's called, Lufia. That's what I'm going to start calling it now, Lufia. One of you wants to remake Lufia and one of you wants to erase it. I hope you guys fight all Christmas dinner. I, it would make me happy. Uh, just <laughs> Thank you for writing in. Just May Fire said, this is a tough one for me. I'll play Lufia. Or what did I say I was going to call it? I already don't remember. Yeah, Luf Lufia. Play Lufia. This game got me through a lot of sick days from school when I was a kid. I remember having so much fun playing it. Remake Gaia. I just recently started replaying it and forgot how much nostalgia I have for it. The soundtrack is eerie, but some of the controls could do with a facelift and erase Breath of Fire 2. I still love this game, but one has to go. And unfortunately, the other two I played more as a kid, and I hold them much closer to my heart. Does every Everyone must have that game they played when they were sick. Mine was Link to the Past. Whenever I play Link to the Past, my stomach gets just a little bit upset. Because I think of how I'd always play it when I was homesick from school. And Captain N wrote in and said, Oh, how I love this one. It's very close to my heart. I'll play Illusion of Gaia because I just did recently and it holds up to what I remember it being. And then I'd play Lufia because I'm starting to play it now and everything I was told it was, it's everything I was told it was. And finally, to play by the rules, I'll remake Breath of Fire 2, then toss it in the bin. I like this game, but rules are rules and I cannot bring myself to sell you. The first two are perfect the way they are. Get the fuck. I honestly didn't even catch that. I read your comment before I put it in the notes and I didn't even, every every week, some of you write in with your little fucking trolling like, oh, I'd erase all three. I'd play all three. La, 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 just to try to get me upset. I thought you were playing by the rules and I misread your comment or you never would have made the fucking show, Captain, and you're banned. Double secret probation and you're fucking unmodded in the discord after like two days. You no captain in my eyes. Fucking lieutenant in is lieutenant lower than captain. I think it is. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm actually going with um, uh, the same options that I am the Johnny wrote in and I am the Johnny five, not the original. I am the Johnny. I am the Johnny five wrote in and said, I've never played or heard of these titles. So I had to go off the box art and screenshots. I was in the same boat. Uh, so I, with that, I will play uh, Lufia out of the three. I enjoyed the screenshots the most and the backup battery is enticing. <laughs> I like the backup battery yeah, on the box. That's awesome. Remake breath of fire Two. I'd add an interactive fighting mechanic like paper Mario as that's the only turn-based RPG I've ever played. And then erase Gaia. Unfortunately for this title, the enemies being named and, Amigo is what did it in. I suppose I could have remade it, but the box art wasn't good enough. I'm sure I'll hear about this, but I'll gladly take the critique. You know what I think you're going to hear about? It's the same thing I'm going to hear about, and that's that in an art in a week where so many of you closet RPG fans got to sound off about three of your cult classics, the person that I agreed with was someone else who was like, I've never heard of any of these, and I just went off the box art, which is what I did. I've heard of them, but I went off the box art as well, and I had the same order as I am the Johnny Five. I will play Lufaya uh, because it's probably the one I get asked to play the most, and I'd like a chance to say its name more uh, wrong more often and turn it into another Ocarina of Tim. So I'll play that one. I'll remake Breath of Fire 2 because it has the best box art of the three, so it earned that right. And then I'm going to erase Illusion of Gaia because it's an illusion. So it never really existed anyway, so nobody would miss it because it's a, see, because it's an illusion. Anyway, uh, that was an ugly imposition of play one, remake one, erase one. But thank you to everybody that wrote in and played as always. What have I been up to over the last week? And then we will get into Earthbound. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Everyone that listens to this podcast knows about our illustrious CEO, my dog Molly. But the other silent partner behind the scenes is my wife. And let me tell you, my friends, a 17-year relationship with another person that has to talk to and live with you is a lot harder to maintain than one with a dog. We've had our ups and downs, and as you all know, a relationship isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They can be a lot of work. You get out what you put in when it comes to relationships, and talking to a therapist can be a fantastic way to put in some work. They can help you work through your issues, learn to communicate better, and even just provide you with an ear to bend when you need it. I've talked to my therapist about my relationships, especially when it came to my stand-up comedy career and how much I was away from home, and they helped me work on ways to keep my relationships strong even when I was out on the road. Uh, it turned out our relationship was actually better when I was out on the road, but that's that's a story for another day. And I know, right? Therapy. Who has the time these days? BetterHelp hears you, and they're making it easy. Fill out a quick form online, and they'll match you up with a therapist that suits your needs, and that'll work around your schedule. You pick the meet times, and you can get your therapy fix from anywhere, over video, phone, or just chat. 
Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RememberTheGame today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RememberTheGame. Uh, I've been playing a lot of video games. Basically, every moment, I'm trying so hard to catch up on my backlog right now. Every moment that I'm not uh, talking to Shaylee or pooping or doing comedy I'm work- or recording a fucking podcast. Uh, I'm playing video games. So I've been playing Sonic Frontiers, which I finished last night, Monday night. That will be next week's episode of Expansion Pass. Uh, if you're interested, two bucks a month, patreon.com slash remember the game. It'll be my spoiler-free review of Sonic Frontiers. I got a lot to fucking say about that game. Uh, Alundra, I'm done with as well. Done-ish. I got to the final boss. I can't win. I'm done. That's probably going to be next week's episode of the show. That was a lot of fun. Now I'm getting really sinking my teeth into God of War Ragnarok because I love it. I just haven't had a lot of time to play it. I'm also playing Castle Crashers for an upcoming episode of the show. And I'm also playing Ape Escape, which won last month's Patreon poll. And that'll be an upcoming episode of the show. So lots of fucking... And to top it all off, I treated myself to an arcade one up on Black Friday and got myself a Miss Pac-Man cabinet. My white whale. And so sometimes between sessions on my consoles, I'll stand up and just go over and sneak in a quick game of miss pac-man i'm so in love with that cabinet its name is becky that's what i've named my miss cabinet or my miss pac-man cabinet becky and i love her so much anyway let's talk earthbound that's why your kids are here as always i like to give you nerds a chance to sound off about the game we're talking about before my guests and i hog the spotlight unstranger wrote in and said i remember going to my local rental store with my best friend and seeing this for the first time we rented it since it looked so weird and we both just fell in love with it after renting it multiple times i got it for christmas this game helped me through multiple bad times a few years ago i got to introduce it to my son who once i guided him through happy happy loved it as well those happy happy sons of bitches i love it i love that earthbound is becoming generational that warms my heart if i had a kid i would tell him you're not going to school until you finish your earthbound because it's priorities uh, Abraham, this is probably why I don't have a kid. Abraham, Abraham Wang Nu wrote in and said, I played Earthbound on your recommendation, and I gotta admit, this was one of the best gaming experiences I have ever had. I love the game, and thank you very much for the solid recommendation. This immediately made its way into my top five RPGs of all time. It is a goddamn top five RPG of all time. I know it's gonna piss some RPG fans off, but I don't know. Will it? I think some of you probably will put it there. It's definitely on mine. There's actually an episode of Expansion Pass uh, where I rank my top ten. RPGs, and I can't remember where Earthbound got slotted in, but I can bet you dollars to donuts it was in the top three, probably top one. I can't remember. I th- anyway, does, I'm not going to spoil it. It doesn't matter. Uh, Justin Autry wrote in and said, To me, this game means more than me than any other. My grandmother got me into video games as a kid, and one of my fondest memories was her guiding me through Earthbound as I was a dumb kid who couldn't get through the most basic of battles until I actually beat it. Last year when she passed away, I left a copy of Earthbound on her grave. I know it's worth a lot of money, but the memories with my nanny are worth more to me. That's love. I respect the fuck out of that because you're right. It's This is not a cheap fucking game. That's... Man, I hope somebody cares about me enough to do something like that someday. Good for you, Justin. I'm sorry to hear about your grandma, but that's a cool story. Ryan Huzz wrote in and said, I never owned an SNES, so I never really knew much about Earthbound. I played through it recently after listening to your Top NES Games episode. Other than the inventory management being infuriating, it still holds up great. It's a blast to play. It has a fun story that's way different than every other JRPG I've ever played. I've been hoping you do a revisited episode about it soon. Uh, yeah, you were right about the inventory, but other than that, this game fucking slaps. And Blindy, gonna have the last take, who wrote in and said, maybe a hot take around here, but the Fuzzy Pickles guy isn't that bad. Also, Nintendo, give us Mother 3, you cowards. The Fuzzy Pickles guy is the fucking worst, and you're on double secret probation for that take blindy i won't have disarray in my fucking house fuzzy pickles i hope that guy oh i fucking i hope he chokes on a pizzle fucking pickle i was gonna say a pizzle but a pick i hate that fuzzy pickles guy um and yeah give us mother three josh and i get into that a little bit um i'm not gonna spoil anything about mother three but i have played it and i i, I think now that i've played it i understand why we're not getting it I'm not saying it's good. It still fucking sucks. There's just, anyway, it doesn't matter. We're not, we're not talking Mother 3. We're talking Mother 2, which is Earthbound, which is one of my favorite games of all time with my brother. It's time to do it. I'm going to queue up those Earthbound tunes. And when they stop, my younger brother Josh and I are going to revisit the iconic Earthbound, which originally released in North America on the SNES on June 5th, 1995. Enjoy the podcast, everybody. Let's go. Oh, 
Okay, I'm so fucking pumped for this episode. Anyone that's been listening to Remember the Game for any length of time probably knows that while I don't love all RPGs, I fucking love Earthbound. And as soon as we started doing these revisited episodes, I knew Earthbound would get an episode. And I figured, who better to bring on this episode but uh, the poo to my Ness. And that is my... I guess that doesn't really make sense because Pooh and Ness aren't brothers. Um, I just wanted to call you Pooh. That's all. Uh, it's that's my younger all brother. You what, what? That's all you wanted to that's, do. That's just. Poo. Yeah, that's the whole episode. I'm done. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll talk to you again next. No, uh, it's my brother Josh. How's it going, man? Oh, not too bad. Adam. How are you doing? I'm. You know what? Because we're talking Earthbound, I'm fucking great. I could talk about this. I could just host a weekly Earthbound podcast. Uh, I love this damn game. Now, here's the thing, Josh. Everyone listening knows my heart on for this game because I talk about it all the time. Uh, you've never talked about Earthbound on the show. So before we get into anything else, like I know we both played this growing up and stuff, but where do you stand? Like, where do you stand on this game? You like it? Love it? Hate it? Favorite game ever? Where, what do you think of Earthbound? I don't think I like it as much as you do, but it's definitely on like, I'd say like my top 10, top 20, top 10 easily for Super Nintendo games. Yeah, no question. Yeah. Would you say, is this your favorite RPG? Or... Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but it's definitely like I'd say top five RPG. Yeah. What would you put ahead of it? Would you put Final Fantasy two? I know you're a big Final Fantasy two fan. Uh, I probably like Final. Uh, no, I like Earthbound a little bit more than Final Fantasy two. Yeah, it's better than Final Fantasy. Uh, well, okay, I shouldn't say that because Final Fantasy fans are gonna lose their mind. I, I, <laughs> dude. Okay, uh, okay. Well, then, sorry to put you on the spot, but like. I've ranked all my favorite RPGs and all this kind of stuff. What would you say? Like, I'll, I'll put you on the spot. If you got a favorite, like, what would you say? If you, we won't hold it to you. It's not binding. What are your five favorite RPGs? Do you think? Well, that's a hard one to think of right off the bat. But I like I've always been a sucker for like Fallout and Skyrim, and you know I consider those RPGs. Yeah, right? they're RPGs. So, yeah, yeah. Those are probably my absolute two favorite. I, oh. I know Skyrim's friggin' what eleven years old now, but I still play it. Well, it's still available. On, you can play that game on potatoes now. I think. Oh, that thing's been re-released a thousand times. It's so wild, eh? Like, I promise everyone, we're going to get to Earthbound. And I and I still want to know what, what the other RPGs are. But, like, is it fucking wild that, like, people bitch about the... Oh, sorry, everybody. So I'm getting another call, and I don't want to answer it. Send a voicemail. It's a fucking goddamn spammer. Uh, that's how top quality of podcast you get here. Remember the game. What was I going to say now? Uh, oh, Skyrim. Everybody shits on like companies for re-releasing games. And uh, to be fair, people shit on Bethesda for re-releasing Skyrim. But, like, has there... Skyrim has got to be one of the games that's been re-released the most in the history of video games. Like, that game is on oh, fucking easily, everything. Easily. Everything. It's insane. Um, okay, sorry. Yeah, I forgot you were such a big Earthbound or Fallout and and Skyrim fan. And I know you like Final Fantasy 2. Um, Final Fantasy 7 is definitely on that list, too, actually. Oh, so I didn't Seven's know you were that big. my absolute favorite Final Fantasy. Se- Seven's your favorite? I'd say so, yeah. That was the one that kind of got me into it the most. It was the first one I beat. Oh, I did not I didn't really have played a lot of them, though. I have seven, two, and I think I've played like three and five as well, but that's about it. Wow. <laughs> I did not you were that big of a Final Fantasy seven fan. Anyway, um, all right, and then Earthbound. Earthbound, okay, this game. Holy fuck. Dan, I love this guy. I Listen, everyone, I don't even know where to start because I feel like I've already talked about how much I love this fucking game. You just replayed this, right, like a month ago or something? Yeah, I did in October, yeah. Yeah, getting ready for this episode and just for something to do because it's a fun game. Um, oh, yeah, I probably play it once a year. Is that right? I, it's been a couple years since I played it. So I'll ask you. Uh, still holds up, yeah? It's still good. Oh, yeah, easily. It's it's the music to me. I've, I think the music in that game is like tops for a Super Nintendo game. No question. I think the only soundtracks on the SNES that I would put up against Earthbounds are Mega Man X and Battletoads and Battle Maniacs. Like, I fucking love the soundtrack to this game. I actually use the music from this game on a lot of other podcasts. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that. But I do it because the music is so fucking good uh, in Earthbound. But it's not just the music. Like, okay, so we're, we've been beating around the bush for five minutes here. And we haven't actually got... If by some fluke you've never played Earthbound, if you listen to this, if by some chance you've never played Earthbound, it's a, it's a classic JRPG with hit points and magic and, and all that kind of stuff. And there's no, like, action combat. You just pick your commands when you go into battles and stuff like that. But what makes Earthbound so special, in my opinion, is just the... It's not your traditional, like, swords and dragons and fucking wizards and, and knights and castles and stuff. You're, you just play as, like, a, a normal kid. Just, like, a kid with a... Like, his weapon is a baseball bat. 
and he like his armor is like ball caps and then he pairs up with like a girl that uses a frying pan and magic a nerdy kid that builds weapons out of garbage and like a ninja kid who's actually like Pooh is the coolest kid in the game uh and it's Ness Paula Jeff and Pooh and you're in like these modern settings and you're out to save the world and that's what's so like Listen, there's a lot of like mechanics in this game I'm going to get into and why I like them so much. But I think what stands out about this game more than anything, like you said, the soundtrack slaps, the graphics are great. But it's just the fact when you're playing this, especially playing it as a kid, just that like you're it's your kids. Like it's not you're not playing as like a weird knight or anything. You're just like a, I like wearing a ball cap. And I was like, that's I, I, like this kid just wears a ball cap like me. And like your web like to get your health back, you eat hamburgers and pizza and stuff like it's all just. It's such a, it's such a creative game. You know what I mean? I don't know for sure. I like the the cartoony the cartooniness of it too. As a kid, that really draws you in more too. Like in the art style or the writing or both? I mean, I guess both, but. Oh, well, more both, but like the art style especially, right? Like yeah. It feels like you're playing almost like a giant cartoon show. Yeah, it pops. Like, listen, I have a I have a massive massive pixel art fetish. I love like the way. Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 3, Chrono Trigger, even even though I don't love Chrono Trigger. Like, I love the way all those games look. But I agree. There's something about this one where everything is just a little bit bigger. The enemies are bigger. The characters are bigger. It's so bright. And, yeah, you're right. It does almost look kind of like, like a Saturday morning cartoon. The whole thing is just like... And it's so weird because I feel like somebody might look at the art style of this game and think this is like Baby's first RPG. You know, like it, because it looks like it's only four characters and it looks kind of basic. But then when you get into playing it, it's a, it's, it's not the world's deepest RPG. There's not a lot of customization options, but it's not baby first RPG. Like this game will fuck you up. Like it's, it's not, it's not a childish game, even though it very much looks like a childish game. Um, well, especially at the beginning when you're just Ness, because if you get killed, that's it, game over. Yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah, that's true. Fortunately, like it's pretty hard to get killed at that part. Like it's, I don't, I, I don't think this game really gets hard until, well, I personally find it the hardest at the beginning and then it just gets easier. I, is that really? Not at the very beginning. When you're fighting the, the damn dogs and the coil snakes and stuff, like if you die there, you just probably should give up. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you died the first, like the first few battles. Yeah. Like when you first start the game, if you've never played it, you just control Ness and you're in like your hometown and yeah, you're fighting like random crows and snakes and dogs that take like two HP when they hit you. And yeah, if you, that's, that's like dying on that first Goomba and Mario brothers. Like if you're dying there, yeah, like, exactly. yeah, it's, it's a shame. If yeah, you do you it, you, yeah. Play checkers. But yeah, Okay, so what? Because because I have one particular part in my head that's the first time the game gets hard. But I'm curious, like, what do you? Where does this? Where does it get tough? Like, where do you think it starts to get tough? Well, when I was a kid, I always found the the first cave there behind the traveler shack where you got to fight the gigantic ant yeah. or the titanic ant. I found that tough as a kid, but I found as I play it later on, it's actually when you're just trying to get to Tucson, you have to fight the the four cops and the chief of police and the the Onet police station. <laughs> Yeah, I love that you fight the fucking cops and the fifth cop runs away scared. So then they send in yeah, the police exactly. chief. I'm going for my boss. Yeah, and then the police chief comes in and he's got his, what is it called? Like the crazy fucking off the wall karate chop attack or something. So stupid. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, like Delta Foxtrot charlie suplex or something like yeah, that. yeah 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 <laughs> oh fuck i love that i love that i love this fucking game to me like all right i'll i'll give you that that cave with the ant can be a little bit tough um this there's fucking goddamn sharks that gang of thugs if you if they start calling for help sometimes they'll fuck you because you'll end up with like four of them beating on you but i find as long as you uh make sure you get the the, the cheap bracelet at the beginning there that first big defense item yeah and then the sharks aren't too bad, but if you go down there and try to fuck with them early on, they'll, yeah, they'll beat the hell out yeah, of you. Yeah, they'll stomp you. Um, the first place it starts to give me grief is the part where you go to rescue Paula and you're going through the planes. I don't think you have her yet. I think it's when you're trying to get to the blue, blue cabin and you're going through the planes. Oh, uh, yeah, the valley there. Uh, yeah, that part. What it called? I can't think of it right now, but. Yeah, Happy Valley, I think. What is it called? Or something? I don't know. It doesn't matter. But yeah, over in there. And like those fucking trees. I run like the fucking wind when I see those trees coming at me. 
Oh yeah, the ones that explode. Yeah, fuck yeah. them. <laughs> but that's that's the first time the game gets hard to me. And I will give you like you're kind of right. Once you get, especially once Paula, and then especially once you add Jeff, and you, it's just when you can spread out the the damage and it's not all hitting nests all the time that helps. But I think um, the the what's it called the deep underground or whatever it's called that valley where the, where you're tiny and the dinosaurs are walking around. Oh, that's like my favorite spot in the whole damn game. <laughs> oh, really? I hate that fucking spot because they walk oh, so no, goddamn like, slow. By the time the... I'm down there, I am so over leveled and overpowered. Like I just beat the shit out of everything oh, down there. <laughs> okay. I fucking I hate that. Oh, I don't hate it, but like you walk so okay. We'll get we'll get into that. We'll get into the whole game. Like obviously, everyone, as you can imagine, there's gonna be spoilers. Like I know this game like the back of my hand. Josh knows this game. We're gonna spoil shit. Um, but it's like. All, to get back to the point I was making about Baby's first RPG, like it's not the toughest RPG you've ever played. And, and like it's very easy to over level and then just cakewalk through it if you want to, and that's fine. Um, but I, I feel like people, like I don't know if you know or not, like this game was like a, this game was not a success when it came out, which is why it took so goddamn long to get it. Well, that's not why it took so long to get our hands on it on like modern systems. It was, I think it has something to do with the soundtrack, was why it was taking so long to get because the music was so similar to like hit music but like uh copies of this game on the super nintendo as i'm sure you know sell for fucking big money now and it's because there wasn't a lot of them sold back then because this game wasn't a success and i don't understand why because i i mean like the only thing i can think of is either a it's because people looked at it and compared to stuff like final fantasy and things it looked childish and kind of stupid or B, I don't know if you remember, dude, their marketing campaign for this was this game stinks. And like it came with scratch cards that smelled like puke and it like I actually do remember the scratch cards and it came with the the guide and everything. Too. Yeah. <laughs> and I think some people just passed on it because of that. And I don't think that would happen today, but it kind of got glossed over back then. And I'm not gonna sit here and say that it's a better RPG than Final Fantasy 3 or Final Fantasy 2 or Chrono Trigger, but I will say I like it better than all of them. There's something about it. This game, like if I had one word to describe this game, it's charming. Like there's something about it. Like the graphics, the writing, the music, the combat. I love the battle screens with the trippy hallucinogenic fucking backgrounds and stuff. Oh yeah, they were, they were on like, I always say they were on acid when they, when they made those backgrounds. Yeah, it's <laughs> funky as shit. And it just, this game is just so charming. The writing in it, like some of the some of the little jokes, like I usually don't talk to every character in my RPGs because I find it annoying. I talk to every character in this game every time I play it because I just find like the, I just find it so funny. Uh, it's got great villains, like obviously, and and I I don't think anyone knows exactly how to pronounce it. How do you pronounce the final villain in this game? How do you say it? <laughs> I would say uh, Gagias, which I'm sure is wrong, but what, what do you say? <laughs> Uh, Gagaius, is Gagaius? What I would say, which I'm sure is horribly fucking wrong, but I always, I always called him uh, Gygus. Like nobody seems to know or Gygus. Sorry, I've heard so many different things said. Um, Gygus like, actually sounds better than what I say. <laughs> like he, he's a sweet villain, but to me, you know who the star of this game is as far as the villains go? It's fucking Pokey. Pokey, Pokey is Cartman before Eric Cartman. Like, that's actually that's like the perfect way to describe them. Yeah. So again, if you've never played this game, uh, so this this fucking thing, this universal being, guy guy guess, however you want to say it, uh, is basically there to like you know destroy everything. And Ness and his friends are out to collect these eight sounds, and the, the eight, you have to go to these eight places called sanctuaries and collect these eight songs, uh, to like channel the power of the planet or whatever to like power up, and then you go and defeat guy guess and save the world but next door to ness there's this little kid named pokey who looks just like uh cartman he looks just like eric cartman um except he has blonde hair but it doesn't matter anyway and uh he pops up throughout the game to just be a piece of shit and i love him every time he pops up and it plays that stupid music i i just i fucking i love him and like and he just chirps you every time he pops up and then at the end of the game he oh, runs exactly. off and, I, I like I just I kind of wish he was the final boss. Like I wish that he had like somehow like stolen Gygus's powers or something. I don't know if you remember it, but in the the one desert town there's a guy well, you talk to everybody, so I'm sure you found it. But in the one desert town there's a guy on the 
far right side of the map. And if you try to talk to him, he says, be careful because some chubby kid pooped on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's like two little black dots and you can't step into it. But if you like check it out, like you're opening a present, it's like there's something that stinks here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Re- I, I do. I remember that. I love that. You know what? Like, oh my God, there's so many, like I can sit here and just spend an hour talking about the things in this game that make me laugh. Uh, fucking pokey makes me laugh you know who else i love is the stupid little robot you fight at the top of the four side tower and it eats oh, bologna sandwiches bot, yeah. yeah it eats <laughs> bologna sandwiches to get its health back and it and then finally the runaway five run in and they just turn it off like they just flip a switch and they just and... sit there and insult you or insult about how stupid and weak it was but when it attacks it fucks you up yeah it like... does fuck you up yeah oh my god it's so fun <laughs> Ah, fuck. I just unplugged my headphones accidentally. Hang on. I can't hear you. Oh, my God. This is going to be the worst episode ever. I'm just... I feel like most episodes we get into, like, all the little technicalities and everything. But, like, I just truly love this game so much that, like, I just want to talk about, like, all the little things and why I love this fucking game. Like, ah, I I love it so much. Okay. We will get a little bit... We should get into some of the mechanics and stuff because we, we owe it to that. Because I will say, this game's not perfect. There's two things in particular that stand out in this game that fucking drive me crazy. Um, So, you know what? Actually, Josh, let's get the bad out of the way first. And then I can just gurgle this game's balls for the last half hour of the podcast. So, uh, the one, one of the things that bothers me about this game is the inventory system. And... A lot of people criticize it, and I think it's a legitimate criticism. The way that each character on the team can carry, like, I don't know. I don't know how many items they can carry, 16 or 20 or something. And having to constantly juggle them between each character, and you're always out of fucking inventory space. And, like, if you carry, like, five, you know, hamburgers, which are, like, potions in a Final Fantasy game, it doesn't say hamburger five. It takes up five individual slots in your inventory. And some would argue that it makes it more realistic, I guess. I find it to just be a nuisance and a half. I fucking hate. And the fact that all of your equipable, your 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 equipment takes up spots in your fucking inventory too. Drives me up the yeah, goddamn wall. I agree that it does make it more realistic, but I also agree with you. Like, why the fuck is my bat taking up a spot in my backpack when I'm using it as a fucking weapon? Yeah, I'm wearing the baseball cap. It shouldn't take a goddamn spot in my inventory. Um, and then, of course, when you're Ness, there's all those stupid things that take up a slot. Like, your ATM card takes up a slot. The soundstone takes up a oh, slot. Oh, yeah! Yeah, If dude. you talk to the dumb, the dumb bitch at the library in Onet, it forces you to take a town map that you can't get rid of that takes up a spot. Yeah. Oh, that you're I just fu- never talked to her. <laughs> Key items should not be inventory slots. And then it gets even more complicated once Jeff joins your team because you're picking up broken shit that you want Jeff to fix. So you got to carry the broken stuff around. But like, and then he needs to like, basically his, in- like I basically use Jeff's inventory for his four equipables and then the items he can use and then like big bottle rockets and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. gotta have the bottle rockets. <laughs> but like, that's one of your inventory spots. Just got like, I find that I spend half the game juggling your inventory. That fucking part where you go into that goddamn monkey cave in the desert and you have to trade oh, items. I knew that was going to come up. Oh, I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> that is that is maybe the worst part of the game. That fucking cave. It's just boring. There's no fighting. The what? It's just trading. It's boring. There's no fighting. It's no. just trading items. It's so boring. Without the, like, I get why the game came with a player's guide. Because there's a couple instances where like, I'd be so, I've ripped on games that I like less than this for being, like, getting me lost. So I feel like it's only fair to talk about that with Earthbound. Stuff like, if you've never played it, there's this part in this the desert where you go into this cave full of monkeys. And I don't remember what it is. You start out, there's, like, two blocked doors and one monkey wants, like, you know, a pizza and one monkey wants a hamburger or whatever. And so you give them that, then they give you something else. And then you start making your way through all these caves and all these branching paths and need to figure out what to trade each monkey to let you open up that door to get through, to get through in it. And like when you add in the balancing of your inventory, if it's full, like to go with trying to make sure you have all the right items to get through that cave is such a pain in the fucking ass. And I you don't have fucking Paul at that point either because she got kidnapped again. That's so right. Course, you only have Jeff and Ness. And when, ah, and so when you lose, dude, one of the greatest things about getting a new party member in this game is that you get like another dozen, uh, inventory slots, which is just every single time, by the time you reach whatever, you know, when you get to the point where you get Paula and then when you get Jeff and then when you get Pooh, like you are, you are at, you are at like fucking 
critical mass with your inventory. And so just to get that extra spot is such a, oh, so I think it's a fair criticism. I think the inventory system in this game sucks. And the fact that like, it's not a joint inventory. So like when it's Ness's, like say it's Ness's turn in battle and you desperately need to heal and you want to use a hamburger, but Ness doesn't have the hamburger in his inventory. You're fucked. Like if the, if whoever dies is the one that has your ability to bring people back to life or has like the uh, cup of life noodles, the item that brings people back in their inventory and they die, you can't use your item to bring people back. Oh yeah, you got to spread that. That's one thing I just learned in the last playthrough I did is like everybody carried at least one or two cup of life noodles. That way if somebody went down, somebody could bring them back. Yeah, like to put it into perspective for people that haven't played, imagine if you're playing like Final Fantasy VII and fucking you had to assign inventory to every character separately. So Cloud has all your Phoenix downs and then Cloud dies. Now Tifa and Barrett can't access the Phoenix downs because they were in Cloud's inventory. It's so frustrating. Like even I just, I don't know. It's a it's just straight up flaw in a game that I love. It's just a straight up flaw. It's a bad system. I hate it. Um, The other thing I hate, I don't know about you. I hate the fuzzy pickles guy so much. Oh, the yeah, the photo guy, yeah. Ah. Oh, if you've never played it, this fucking photographer that looks like Colonel Sanders in an Abraham Lincoln costume just flies down from he does. He fucking flies down from the sky and randomly takes pictures of you and makes you say fuzzy pickles. And at the end of the game, you get to see all the pictures he took. And it's like a nice little like thank you so much. But they take like 30 seconds every time it happens. And there's no way to skip it, and there's no way to avoid it. And it's so, like, the first time you play the game, maybe it's cute and charming. When you've played it a dozen times and you just want to play it, it's so fucking annoying. I hate that guy. Is that me? Like, do you hate him? And then, sorry, I lost you there. What were you saying? You said there was something else? I don't know if you remember it, but when we were kids, uh, because the guy just falls down from the sky. Yeah. And then he just, takes back off. I don't know what you remember this at all, but when we were kids, he used to just make a loud fart noise every yeah. time he took off. Because he does. He just like, <laughs> and just flies up into the sky. It looks like he's farting. I, that's the only thing that makes him redeemable. I hate the fuck. I hate the fuzzy pickles guy so much. I hate him. I'm trying to think if there's anything else with this game I hate. I think, is there anything you hate? Like, I have one other thing that I want to point out that I think is kind of a flawed design. Um, is there anything else about this game you don't like? Uh, the only other one I could think of is like there's certain areas of the game like where you got to go up a ladder or like you fall down a hole. And sometimes the bad guy will be right there when you hit the ground so they'll get like an ambush attack on you. Yeah, that's yeah. That, okay. That's not a major thing. It's just a little annoying. I'll agree with that because the thing about it is like to me one of the pluses of this game, if you've never played it, there's no random encounters. All the enemies are on the overworld. And if you don't touch them and they don't touch you, you don't have to fight them. And for the most part, and we'll get more into like the, the back end attacks and stuff. For the most part, I like it, but I do agree. It can be frustrating, especially if you're in bad shape, dude, when you're in the, the, uh, the dungeon, uh, in Pooh's homeland where you're going for that soundstone and you yeah. fall in like one of those little electric dots gets a hold of you or something like, and you're in rough shape already, you can get fucked up in that cave. So I agree with that. That can be annoying. Um, the thing I was going to bitch about was, I think there's a couple of things where without a player's guide, you might be kind of fucked. There's the part. And one part in particular is the part to get into master Belch's, uh, layer where you just have to stand behind the waterfall for three minutes. Oh yeah. Yeah. One of the Saturn guys will tell you about that. You have to stand there for three minutes, but that's about it. Yeah. And like the thing about it is like, even when I play it now, I know that like, if you've never played it, you, you, there's a part where you have to get into the, to get into this layer, you have to say the password. So you walk behind a waterfall and then it says, what's the password. And then you're just not supposed to touch the controller for three minutes. And then they'll be like, all right, you're allowed in. And like, it's funny that that's the password, but it should have been like 10 seconds. And they should have made it easier to figure out. Because if you didn't have a player's guide, you're right. The Mr. Saturn tells you. But it can be hard to read what the Mr. Saturn says because of that weird... Oh, yeah, because they, they have that weird writing, yeah. And then you're standing there and you're like, is this really all I'm supposed to do? Like, and it's like three minutes. Like, three minutes uh, is a long fucking time to just stand there and do nothing. I usually I, just put the controller down and go take a piss. Yeah, you go to the bathroom or you go get a drink or something. But it's just... I, I And that's the kind of stuff where I think it's maybe just a little bit 
just a little bit too cryptic. There's that, there's that part where you go to like the reverse four side and everything is backwards. That can be a little bit frustrating too, trying to figure out where to go. Um, like these are minor criticisms because I love this game. I just, I'm just being honest. I just find them just a little bit annoying. That, to me, nothing will top the inventory. The inventory is the worst part of this game. I hate it. Um, I think we're good. If I, if you got anything else to bitch about, I like everything else. No, I, I think we got the worst of it. I mean, there's this isn't another big bitch or nothing, but uh, at the end of the game, when it lets you just run around and you can go anywhere you want, but there's no more enemies or anything, I didn't really find the point of that whole yeah like, ending. I mean, it's just I think you can just go around and talk to people about you know what happened and stuff. I mean, but... you can you can buy that house in Onet, but then the house is just wrecked and there's nothing to do inside the house. Yeah, it's just a way to spend all your money. Oh, there's yeah. actually that's another fucking criticism of this goddamn oh, another criticism of this game <laughs> fucking drives me goddamn bananas is having to Oh, I didn't realize I had this many gripes with this game. I love this game. Um, <laughs> the goddamn money system is so stupid. Like that when you so if you've never played it, when you kill enemies, you get money like you would gold in like a normal game, but you don't get the money. Your dad deposits money into your bank account. So whenever you want to buy stuff, you have to go to a fucking ATM, which means you have to keep the ATM card in your inventory, take it up an inventory spot, and then withdraw your cash and then go buy stuff. And it's so annoying. Like it's just give me the money. Like I get what you're trying to do, but just give me the money. Like, it's an ATM card. Interact existed in 1995. Let me use my debit. Like, why do I have to go get cash? Fucking drives me up the goddamn... It's just a minor thing, but it's so annoying. And when somebody dies, if you don't have cups of life noodles on you, you have to walk all the way to a fucking hospital to get them. That's oh, annoying, yeah, that too. Part, that was annoying. Like, But ugh. you get why they do the ATM thing, right? Because, like, if your money is in the bank... And you die, that money's not touched, but you lose half the money you're carrying. I get it. I get it. It just it's just a but, nuisance. Like it's minor complaints. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the idea, like the you know, they're trying to make it a modern RPG and like a like a modern setting. So they're like, No, your dad puts money in your bank account. You have to go to the ATM and withdraw it to buy it. Stuff. I like the concept yeah, but, of it. It's just an it's just a, it's just an inconvenience is all. But what which dad is depositing ten thousand dollars in their ten year old kid's bank account? <laughs> Dad never gave you ten grand growing up. I got it all the time. <laughs> he just no. I'm kidding. He didn't. He, I guess I was. He must the have been the more favorite son. Yeah, I was the favorite. I guess that's all. Um. Okay, I'm done complaining. I I think that's enough. There's lots of good things, and I want to talk about the good things because I I like this game. So my favorite thing about this game is the no random encounters, because uh, I hate random. It, it that borderline ruins RPGs for me sometimes. Like, it makes me not want to explore anymore because I don't want to run into any more random fights. And in this game... And then when it hits you, like, every step. Oh, fuck. And in, the, oh, in Final Fantasy 2, when you're climbing up that fucking robot, that... Oh, fuck me. I, I won't get to it. Oh, I'm yeah. not gonna... It's such a long area. And it's like, fight, you finish the fight, you take a step, another fight. Oh, that's <laughs> always what stands out to me is that part. But in this game, every enemy you fight is is on the overworld. It's on the screen. And you can hide behind, like, they're pretty hard to avoid sometimes, but you can do it. And what I like about it is you can see them coming, and if you can find a way to get up behind them and sneak into them, uh, then then the fight will trigger with, like, a green flash, and then you get to first attack. And if they find a way to sneak up on you, then the fight will trigger with a red uh, splash screen, and they get the first attack. And otherwise, it's just a black attack, and it fights. Just that alone, I think, is a great concept. And then add in that uh, when you're over-leveled, when you're walking through a world, and instead of having to fight the the bad guys and just like go through the motions and do two attacks and beat them, if you're super over-leveled, bad guys will run away from you. And if you walk up and touch them, it doesn't even make you fight. It just by default gives you the win, gives you the experience points, and you move on. That is every game should have that. Every RPG should have that auto-win thing when you're up against a really weak enemy. It is a godsend, in my in my opinion. It makes it makes the grinding and the exploring so much more uh, tolerable for me because I don't have to worry about random encounters and I don't have to worry about easy fights against shitty enemies. Oh yeah, especially like when you do, you know you complete one of the big caves and you fight the final boss and you kill him. Everybody is scared of you now in the cave. Yeah, like you have to. It's 
like it's it's not frustrating. It's just like there is no quick escape. It's like when you go through a dungeon and then you defeat the final boss, it doesn't automatically warp you back to the entrance of the dungeon. You've got to hoof it back through the dungeon. But the fortunate thing is, yeah, every enemy in that dungeon is terrified of you. So if you don't want to fight any more of them, you don't have to. And if you do want to fight them, you'll, you'll almost always get the surprise attack because they're running away from you. And sometimes it'll just give you automatic wins too, which is, oh, yes. Dude, this is making me want to play this game again now. Like just thinking about that. I... <laughs> That's my favorite thing about this game. Uh, I have another, but I know I'm hogging the conversation. I just love this game so much. Uh, what about what's you? If I was to ask you outside of the soundtrack and stuff, like what's your favorite thing about this game? Outside of the soundtrack and everything? Yeah. I, I think it's just the, the combat. I like the, the, you know, even though the spikes don't move at all when you're fighting. They just did such a good job on all their looks and everything. Dude, yeah. And that's... They're generally unique. I mean, they do reuse a couple and just change the colors of them. But generally, there's unique ones almost everywhere. Yeah, that's where I was going to go next, too. I love the combat in this game. I like the way the enemies look with their big, bright, colorful sprites. And the way it's almost like a first-person view from, like, Ness's point of view when you're fighting. Like, it's just you see your four or whatever amount of characters are in your party, you see their, their like stat bars at the bottom. And then the way you're just looking at the enemies with those funky backgrounds that are awesome. I love the backgrounds for the fights. Yeah. And like when they use like a spell, it's like a little line that starts from the distance and comes right up and it hits the screen. Like yes. you directly. Yeah. Yeah. Like when they use fire on you, it's like a red line coming toward the screen. That's it's, it's, it's first person kind of, it's very immersive. I love it. Um, the thing about the combat I love the most in this game are the rolling HP counters. I think that, that is, can save your ass. <laughs> dude, if you've never played this, everybody, like you have HP at the bottom of the screen like you would in any RPG. But when you, like, say you've got 200 HP and you take a, a hit of 200, instead of it just going to zero and kill you, it's like three rollers. Like, picture like a, like a, like a, um, uh, like a gas, a gas tank or like a gas dispense. What, what, what is that? A pump, a gas pump. I was like, what the fuck is the word for the thing that pumps gas, but it's a gas pump. And the way those like those rolling numbers roll, that's how your HP rolls. And so if you take 200 HP damage, it counts down to zero. And if you can either win the fight, run away, or use something to heal that character before it hits zero, you're okay. That is so brilliant. Cause you're right. I, it, many, everyone that's played this game and, and gone the distance in it, you've had at least one fight where that, that countdown clock has saved your ass at least one probably multiple per playthrough and you'll also get that extra second that once it hits zero if it's still saying something on the top of the screen the character doesn't die until it says like jeff got hurt and collapsed on the top of the screen yeah because it's got like a play-by-play -play almost at the top of the screen and so you're right like if say ness is going down to zero and then you cast a healing spell dude it's so stressful like when you have four members of your party say ness is the one that's killed and it's counting down to zero and you know that ness has used life up on himself to keep himself alive and you or are you're just trying to get everything to go as fast as yeah, possible yeah <laughs> yeah you were just mashing a on the controller being like just get through you're like jeff attacks does 42 damage or whatever and you're like i don't give a fuck about jeff's attack like, get to Ness using this spell. And then, like, it'll hit zero. But if the message across the top has started to say, like, you're right. If it says Ness uh, uses the power of life up A, while it's hitting zero, it doesn't matter. It'll bring you back up. And you're like, oh, thank fuck. Or someone's going to zero. And I love even when you're dying, when it, they hit you. And instead of it just doing the normal, like, boom noise and the screen shaking a bit, it hits you with that big, like, boom. And the screen just shakes like crazy. And like, like you just oh, got yeah, punched yeah. in the teeth and then it's counting down to zero and you like, you've already used all your attacks. You're like, please fuck. Let these attacks win this fight. You know, like get me out of this fight alive. Please fuck. Get me out of this fight alive. I, I just think that's such a brilliant mechanic. That countdown thing. I wish more games used it. I, I don't know how they came up with it either. I just think it's a, I love it. I think it's such an awesome idea. Um, so yeah, those, I, I knew you were going to go there. Those are my two favorite things. I also do like the enemies. Like you said, not just the design, but there's just some really funny enemies. Like there's some really creative, like the scalding cup of coffee and, and you fight like an angry cup of coffee that splashes coffee on you. Uh, that, that, thing, that thing hurts actually, that stupid cup of coffee. As it would. <laughs> I think because like you can fight the like, um, oh fuck, what are some of the other stupid enemies in this game? The unpleasant lady. 
and like she hits yeah, you with her purse, yeah. that shouldn't hurt you as much as a cup of coffee spilling coffee on you. That should hurt way more. Uh, and then there's the enemies that just do the completely useless crap. Like I remember there's a hippie you can fight and it's like the hippie pulled out a ruler. Now we can measure the length of things easier. And it's yeah. like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> I lo- <laughs> yes i love the um stinky ghost the stinky ghost belches and like they actually make the like <clears throat> like the little bird oh, yeah, noises. Like little, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or when you're fighting master belch who if you've never played this there's a boss who's just a giant pile of puke and while you're fighting it it just you constantly hear like burps and fucking gross noises um, yeah, and it makes all your characters cry so then they can't hit their targets yeah because it because and... <laughs> it smells so bad it makes your eyes water that's so good. I like that you can buy the teddy bears and then the teddy bear follows you around and then it'll take damage for you to buy you time. Like it's just Oh, the teddy bears are like one of the best items in the game. Yeah, other than the fact that they take up fucking goddamn real estate in your fucking backpack. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Even though they're not in your backpack, they're on the anyways. Uh yeah, I I agree, dude. There's so many great enemies in these in these games. They're just fucking hilarious. And there's a lot of little things too, like the part where you deal with the cult, the blue blue people to save uh paula i yeah the uh happy happy <laughs> yeah i never clued in as a kid that they're like blatantly a shot at the kkk oh hardcore like they look just except... they just put a little pom-pom on the end of their hat and made them blue <laughs> yeah fucking unbelievable man like what a like what a what an off the wall brilliant video game i just I, I feel like like I'm, I'm almost torn because like I wanted to revisit this episode, this game, but then I was like, I've talked about this game so much that I'm like, I don't know what I can even say that I haven't already said. Um, I like that each of the four characters play so differently from each other too. Like Ness, Ness is obviously the most powerful member of the group. And he's got like yeah. a, a nice mix of like physical attacks and magic that attacks and healing and everything. Uh, Paula is obviously your mage. Like she's a beast with her magic. I like that Jeff has no magic, but I would argue that in some ways Jeff is the most powerful guy on the team because those multi bottle oh, yeah, rockets. Like your barbarian. Yeah, he can hit the hardest, but he can't do magic. Yeah, yeah. those multi bottle rockets. And once you get rockets, those multi bottle rockets, you, you you can fuck anything up with yeah. a multi bottle. Yeah. Like going into end game or going into like the like the fight against the diamond dog and stuff. Like I'll go to the arms dealer um, in the deep darkness, and I'll I'll Jeff's entire inventory outside of the weapons he's using and his and his armor is just like multi bottle rockets. Oh, exactly. I do yeah. the exact same thing. And then and then Pooh, like the only problem I have with Pooh is I wish you got to use him more, because he's such a beast, and you just like it feels like you get him. You have him for like 15 minutes and then he leaves again. And then you have him for the last like hour of the game. Yeah. You really don't get him that often. And you know, he doesn't get like any weapons or anything other than his sword, which, you know, I told you about that when I spend enough time, I always get the damn sword, but yeah. So if you've never played this, unlike Ness, Paula and Jeff Poo, uh, doesn't have a, he doesn't have a, a weapon. Like he has one, one weapon in the whole game, the sword of Kings. And other than that, he just attacks on un- unarmed and he does damage. He's fine. Um, but to get the sword of Kings, it's like a random drop. Okay. Sorry about that. Everybody. I, if this has been a piece together episode, for some reason, my computer fucking hates me today and it's jumping all over the place. Uh, we were talking about the sword of Kings. I have never gotten the sword of Kings. Cause yeah, it's like a one in 128 chance or something to get it from enemies. But now you were telling me that like, so I've always just played through the whole game with poo unarmed. You were, you always get the sword of Kings. Yeah, to me, it's it's like a challenge. There's a lot of these 128 items, but that's the only one I actually will purposely go for. And it is in the worst spot because you can only get it from the Starman Super, which is right in the middle of a really long dungeon that's relatively hard. That's what it was, the Starman Supers, yes. I knew it was a tough enemy that had it, but yeah, it's the Starman Supers that fucking have it. That is tough. Is it worth it? Like, is it that powerful to get it? Not really. It only increases his offense by like twenty five. Fuck sakes! <laughs> it's just. A- but it's just to see that when you look at his equipment, he's got like all the king things, like yeah, the sword, yeah. the dandum, the bracer, and the cloak. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I get it. And then the other thing is like, if you grind long enough to get the sword of kings for Pooh, you're gonna be so over leveled oh, and overpowered. You gained twenty levels doing it. Yeah, that now you're just. Fucking- and even one time playing it, I got the stupid sword, and then as I was going through the rest of the dungeon, I got a second one. Really. Yeah, and I was like, "Are you are you kidding me?" And nothing you can do with it. <laughs> can you sell it? 
honestly can't remember if I sold it or not. If I just had to call the uh, Tracy's yeah, company fuck. there and have them come. You imagine? Me. Yeah. So like, if you, Express. yeah. If you've never played this game, one of the ways you can deal with your inventory is you can call Ness's little sister, and she'll she's like a delivery driver, like picture like FedEx or something, and she'll come to you and either bring you some items that you stored or take some items to storage. You have this like fucking legendary rare sword and you call this girl from this town that works for a escargo express to come and get it and just keep it in like a warehouse somewhere fucking weird game i've never got actually i found it kind of funny because i i didn't realize this until last time i played that escargo is snail so it's the snail express but they're actually pretty damn fast yeah she's super fast (laughs) it's fucking crazy um but that kind of shit actually that's just another fault like that kind of irritates me like the Escargo Express thing is it's just a pain in the ass. Stuff like, oh, fuck. I, I, I don't mean to go back to negative, but like you get the stupid pencil eraser and the even stupider eraser eraser, which are these two items yeah. you need to get rid of statues of pencils and erasers. And I think the eraser only uses like you only use it once. Um, yeah, you only use the eraser eraser once. But what's frustrating is if you've never played the game and you wouldn't know better, you you don't know if you should have them with you at all times, which is a pain in the ass because inventory is a, is valuable. Uh, like those spots or you don't have it with you you hike through a dungeon you get to the stupid statues and then you have to hike back to get to a phone to call to get your stupid fucking ah uh, it's just fucking inventory is the biggest fault of this game fucking drives me up the goddamn wall i hate it i fucking hate it um uh but yeah other than that i don't know i mean i like the characters i, I mean i know we've been all over the map with this episode you guys like if you haven't played it I don't, I, I'm just, I'm begging you. Like, it's on everything now. If you like RPGs, it's just such a charming game. It's not that hard. There's a couple of points that'll fuck you up, but it's an RPG. It's a classic JRPG. You can just grind. Enemies don't level up with you. You can just grind until you're strong enough to get through. And uh, what I, I think, the thing I like about, one of the things I like about this game is that there's no overworld. Like, there's no world map. You just go from, like, city to city or location to location and I do, I do think it's a little bit of a pain in the ass until you get teleport B. Like when you have teleport A and you have to run in the long line, it, you know, there's only certain places you can use it and it just, it, it's kind of annoying. Um, but I like yeah, the way Yeah, once all, you get Pooh though, I think Pooh has B right off the bat or pretty close to it. Yeah. And once you've got teleport B and you can teleport by just running in a circle, then you can travel anywhere you want. Um, I like how different all the locations feel. Like the first couple of places, like it's Onet. And I, and I love that for the first four places, like they're numbers. Like it's yeah, you know, like Onet, Tucson, Threed, and Forside. And Forside, yeah. and they feel like a like a small town, another small town, uh, another small town, and then like the big city that feels like a big city. Uh, but then you also get to go to like winters, you get to go to summers in the desert, you get to go to the deep darkness, which is like a swamp. You get to go to this like underground dinosaur fucking world. There's uh, Saturn Valley with the Mister Saturns, and then I love that at the end of the game, you all get into the ship and they send you back in time. And they put your be like your your souls, like your your essences, into these like crappy looking little robots that Pokey laughs at because Pokey's a piece of shit. And I love that one of the four robots has the ball cap on his head, like Ness does. Um, oh I, yeah, yeah. Like, and I wanted to ask is I wanted to talk about the ending of the game a little bit because there's a lot of debate about the ending of the game and about what it's supposed to represent because it really, I don't mean to get too graphic, but it really does look like you're. Like, the cave entrance you go into to get to the final part of the game, it could be implied that it's a uh, part of the female anatomy. And then you're inside it, and it kind of looks like you're walking through the inside of, like, a body. And it's like... Yeah, it looks like you're walking on intestines, and eventually you get to, like, well, a giant womb, in a sense, I guess. Yeah, and, like, that's kind of, like... There's a lot of fan theories online that, like... Is that what it's supposed to represent? That you're going in to kill Gygus, like inside? Because remember too that like the game is called Mother in Japan. It's Mother Two, and like oh shit, I actually never even thought of it that way. <laughs> right. So like the game, the series is called Mother, and you're going into yeah. this thing that looks like you're going like along a giant like umbilical cord or whatever into like a womb, and you know what I mean? Like it's. It's it, I I like the final boss a lot. I love the way the music and stuff is. I frankly think that final oh, and then when you're fighting Gygus in his first form, it looks like a fetus. Like it looks like a baby that you see on like a like on um. I've never had children, so I don't know any of the terms for all you parents listening to this. The you know like when you find out you're pregnant and they give you that like grainy black and white picture of the baby inside of you. 
Oh, the ultrasound. The ultrasound. Thank you. I'm going to hear about that. People are going to make fun of me for that. <laughs> but it's, I don't know what the fuck it's called. I don't have kids. But, like, it almost looks like a baby, like, a background, like, in an ultrasound that you're fighting. And then as you fight it, like, it kind of breaks apart and it eventually it turns into, like, a demon. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's a creepy fucking... Frankly, it's a kind of scary final boss for a game that's so oh. bright and colorful and childish the whole way through. Maybe it's supposed to be like the mother of all evil or something. Well, and that's the debate is like, what are they right? trying right. to do with that? Yeah. Um, I think it's creepy as fuck. And then I love that for the final, final boss fight, all you need to do is like, Paul has got this prey command, which quite frankly, I think is useless as shit for the entire game. I never use it. Oh, I, I never use it. Cause it's, yeah. It, it either does fuck all or once in a great while it hurts the enemies or once in a great while it heals you like 10 hit points. Yeah. It's just like a total like crap shoot. Um, but then, uh, at the end of the game, like she just keeps praying and that's all you basically have to do is just have the other three stay alive and it, you know, you do whatever. And Paula just keeps praying. And I love that at the very end of the game, the game, the final prey is you like they call on you to help. Um, the, the player. Oh yeah. Like the player. That's right. Yeah. I just think it's, I just, I just think it's a brilliant, I, I think it's a brilliant game. I don't think it's perfect. It's got some, some, some faults. It's, it's got, you know, that like fucking inventory drives me goddamn bananas. Um, but I just, I just think it's a brilliant video game. I think it's so creative. I think it's, it's, it's such a tragedy that the franchise is dead and we don't get anything from it anymore. Um, well, they even tease you in the game because in fourth side, there's a sign that's like, we're working on the next first sound. Yeah. And I'm not going to get too into this. And there this. is a Mother 3, because Earthbound was technically Mother 2. Yeah, that's what I was like. There, so I've played Mother 3 because my buddy Chris got me a fan. If you don't know, Mother 3 released on the GBA in Japan, and it never got an English uh, translation. It never got ported. Uh, there's a fan translation out there, which you can get. I have a copy of it. I've played it. It's fun. Um, I do get why. I think I understand why it's never been released here, but I'm not going to spoil anything about it on the show. I just think there's some characters in the game that can't be really uh, removed that I think would be considered insensitive by today's standards. And I think that Nintendo doesn't want to deal with the headache of it, but I'm so glad that this game gets like re-released on like the SNES classic and it's on switch online and it's on the 3ds and it's readily available now because it's such a, it really has become a cult classic of a video game and it's so fucking good. It really is. Like, there's a lot of crap on the SNES. This game is... And, like, listen, there's a lot of good games on the SNES, too. Uh, and I think this one goes right up there with the best. I think it's up there with Super Mario World and Link to the Past and Super Metroid and Final Fantasy 2 II and 3 and Chrono Trigger. And I think it's right there. It's so... It's... It's just such a... It's such a trip of a fucking video game. Like, you're never bored. I don't think... Outside of the Fuzzy Pickles guy... And I don't love that monkey cave. I can't think of a part of the game I'm bored at. Like, I'm always entertained. The monkey cave. The what? The monkey cave. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. Outside of the monkey cave and the fuzzy pickles guy. Um, yeah. yeah, other than that, no, the game holds itself up pretty good. Yeah, like, it's all you're always doing something. And you know what else I like about this game? There's not a ton of exploration. And I know some people would consider that a fault. I hate... I I hate open world exploration because I always feel like I've missed something. There's not a lot to miss in this game. Like other than dialogue and little things, there's not like a bunch of side quests and there's not, you know, hidden worlds to go look around in. It's, it's a pretty, pretty compact little package. And I, and I like that, you know? No, the only thing I ever missed once is the, uh, the second dungeon that you fight the, the one big mole in. Like Mondo Mole was his name. That's the one that's in that happy, happy town. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first time I played the game, I didn't even go in that cave. I didn't see it. Yeah. And I kept playing through the game. Yeah, and it's... And so that's... I didn't gain a few levels, so Paula was getting her ass kicked, like left, right, and center until I got her strengthened up. Yeah. And then I get to the end, and I was like, well, where the hell is the second note? Like, how did I miss that? And I finally I went back, and I found it. By the time I went back there, though, I had the full group and you know i'm like level 80 so like that dungeon was stupid easy i think i one shot killed the mole but yeah because that's that is one thing about this game that's kind of funky is like there's eight sanctuary spots and they're numbered but you can i won't say you can play them in any order but you can certainly miss a couple and come back to them or get a hold of them early or stuff like that and yeah like that mole is one of them and you can go to like which is like fuck which what number is he the second or the third the mole's the second one the second one and yeah, you can miss yeah. that thing and, and like come back later and just fucking devastate it. 
Um, there's a couple of them that are like that. I want to say the the rat in the basement in Foresight is another one that is. Yeah, easy you to can't miss. get there early, but you could easily miss it. Yeah, and then you're like, "What the fuck?" Like it's. I I I think that the reason it came with a player's guide is like I think part of the reason I know this game so well is because I had the player's guide growing up, so it was easy for me to know it. Um, if you were to play without it, you can certainly beat this game without a player's guide. You don't need one, but I see you have the the hint guy, but I don't ever use them. No, me neither. But I get why they included the player's guide with it. At times it can be a pretty confusing game. There's, there's a lot of instances where like you have to do something to trigger the next event and like, it'd be easy to miss that. Or like you said, miss the sanctuary spot altogether and things like that. Um, but for the most part, yeah, like it's. I love this. I fucking love this game. I wanted to tell a quick story, and I told this story on Expansion Pass last week, but you, I don't think you've ever heard this story, and it's directly related to you. And I just want to warn anyone listening to this with your kids or kids in the car, maybe skip the next three minutes. Not because of profanity, but because I'm going to be revealing some secrets about uh, life that you might not want anyone to know. So consider this your warning. Skip ahead three minutes, all right? You have five, four... Three, two, one. Okay, so Josh, do you remember we got this game for Christmas? I don't know if you're going to remember that or not, because you would have only been like, I don't know, fuck, it was 1995. You were probably like eight or nine. Um, no, I, I, I remember pretty well, yeah. Okay, so I went snooping in mom's closet that year because I wanted this game so bad. And at that point, I knew that they would they helped Santa Claus. I knew that you know mom and dad are helping Santa out. And... I found it in the closet, the big box in mom and dad's room. And then mom caught me. I turned around and mom was there and she was livid. And she said, if you tell your brother and ruin this, she's like, I'm taking this game back and you're not getting anything for Christmas ever. And I was so scared of like that. I, I, I went from being like, Oh, wow. It's just mom and dad to like a full blown Santa kid again, because I was so scared that you would find out the truth. And then in return, I would get in trouble and we wouldn't get earthbound. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I definitely didn't know that. No. Your defense. Yeah. That's the first time I ever heard that. <laughs> Next time you talk to mom, bring it up. She was, I don't know if I've ever made her that mad. Then when she caught me in the closet, snooping and finding the Christmas gifts, and I was so happy. It was the biggest roller coaster ride emotionally of my entire life because within three seconds, I went from like, holy fuck, we're getting earthbound to like, yeah, because I turned around and she was standing there and she was like, the fuck you are. Like, she, oh man, it was, anyway. I didn't know if you knew that, but yeah, it was, it was very scary. No, no, that's the first time I ever heard that one. Well, there you go. So I almost cost us earthbound as a kid because I'm a dummy, but fortunately we did get it and it went on to become one of my absolute favorite games of all time. I feel like we didn't go over all the bosses and stuff, but like if you've never played it, I'm trying not to spoil everything for you. I just want you to play it. And if you have played it, you know, you know what all the bosses, you know, everything. Um, before we wrap this up and score it, I'll ask you, what is your favorite? Who would you say is your favorite boss in the game? Do you need a minute to think? I have, like favorite boss in the whole game. Yeah. Because I'll tell you personally, my favorite is is the the carbon like the dog that becomes like the diamond dog, or whatever. I was gonna either say him, or just for like kind of like, oh, he was a pain in the butt to fight sometimes. But uh, Shroom. Oh yeah, the giant the... mushroom guy. He was in Winters. He was up there. But I think the dog was probably my favorite for a challenging fight. Yeah. yeah, the challenging fight, and he just looks cool. Like I just think he's the coolest looking boss in the game. Um, also shout out to that crappy robot that eats bloaty sandwiches because he's That's awesome. Too. Yeah. I love that little robot. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, what is there? A, is a, like, I, I would argue, Oh, also shout out to the five moles in the desert cave that all think they're the third strongest of the five. I, oh, I've, yeah. I've always loved that. Three, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they all think they're the, they all are like, I am clearly the third strongest of the five of us. Like they all say it. I love that. Um, I also wanted to say that I think maybe the toughest fight in the game, if it's not that dog, that, cause that dog will fucking feed you your lunch. Um, the fucking, the Krakens, the first time you fight the Kraken on the ship, uh, that thing will kick your ass too. I was going to say, I've never had too many problems with them now, but yeah, I definitely have before like when I first played the game. Yeah, I found... Oh, and actually, when you're in the desert and you go to that temple and you're missing... I can't remember if you have Pooh or not at that point. 
And you have to fight these, like, one of the enemies that you fight in that temple are these giant, like, stone men. And I don't know why I struggle so hard in that temple every time. That temple feeds me. Oh, the pyramid. Yeah. I I get my yeah, ass kicked. They're weak to ice. That's all you need to blast them with is an ice spell. Oh, maybe that's what I need to do because I always get my ass kicked in that fucking cave. Always. You like, you might, I don't know if you, you played the game enough. You probably know about it. But, too, in both the deserts, like, it's it's cheap, so I, I try not. If I see one, I'll kill it, but I don't look for them. But there's called a, a criminal caterpillar and a criminal mastermind. Yeah. Or a mastermind caterpillar or something like that. And they always run away from you. And if you get them from behind, you'll kill it instantly. But they're worth, like, I know the one that you fight in the one big desert, they're red. They're the mastermind. And they're worth 80,000 experience. Yeah, it's insane. Like, it, it's a very easy game to over-level and walk through if you want to. Which I, which is one of the reasons I think it's so good. Because even if you're not good with RPGs or you, you struggle with them, like, it's a great game to... Like you, it, it, anyone, I feel like anyone could beat this game. If you've got enough patience to grind away at it, like anyone could beat this game. Um, it's, it's a good game to get your foot in the door. If you're not a big RPG. Person. Totally. I don't want to, and again, yeah. like, I guess as we start to wrap it up, it's not baby's first RPG, but it also isn't the world's most complex RPG. Like it's, it's, I don't, okay. I'll ask you this. What, what do you like better? This or super Mario RPG? Oh, I, I have to take Earthbound over Super Mario RPG, but Super Mario RPG alone was its own, like, I like that game a lot. Too. I do too, but I, I think I like Earthbound a little bit better too. I I love I, I love this game. I love this game so much. I I wish I was good with Ness and Smash Brothers because I love Ness, but I can't play as them in Smash Brothers to save my fucking life. Like, just... Yeah, terrible. no, I, I tried, like, playing with him constantly to see if I could get good with him, and apparently if you get good with him, he's, like, devastating. But... Yeah. I hate fighting I, him. I can never get that good. I hate fighting him. Fucking PK fire makes me so angry because I can't. Anyway, and I don't know why the hell they call it PK fire in the game because in Earthbound it's all PSI. Yeah, that's true, eh? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's translation. I don't know. Um. All right. Well, listen. Like we could go around in circles forever. I I feel like we've done a good job talking about what makes this game awesome without completely ruining everything that's in the game. Uh, if you've never played it, I'm, I'm I'm imploring you play it. It's got the remember the game seal of approval. It's one of my absolute favorite games of all time. I I adore this game, and it's fortunately available everywhere now, so you don't have to shell out like seven hundred dollars to get your hands on a fucking uh copy for the SNES. You can just play it on your Switch or your SNES Classic I'm or whatever. Fortunately, pretty sure all those ga- old games that I gave you that we've had in the drawer forever. I think Earthbound's in there. <laughs> no, unfortunately, it isn't. I think I took it when I moved out and I sold it when I sold my game collection. And I oh, sold you know it. What? I think you're right. I think you did take that yeah. one. Yeah. And I sold it for like fucking $200. <laughs> now it's fuck. <laughs> it's worth a mortgage now. Fuck sakes. Anyway. Um, all right. Well, we got to score this thing. There's eight, eight sanctuary spots. So I know it's kind of a lame schedule or scale, but we'll score it out of eight. So I'll ask you, Josh, if you were to score earthbound out of eight sanctuary spots, how many sanctuary spots are you giving Earthbound? I, I would give it about seven and a half just because of the stupid fuzzy pickle, pickle guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, He's annoying it, enough that he brought it down a bit. That's fair. Yeah, it's at least a seven for me. Probably seven and a half as well. It's losing the point for the Mario tax. And I hate the fuzzy pickle guy too. But other than that, it's just one of the rare games that I actually just enjoy watching people play as much as I enjoy playing it myself. I could just watch somebody play it because I just love this game. The music, the the art style, I just, everything about it. I love this game. So, uh, I think we're good. I don't, I think that's it. You good. Do we forget anything? No, I think we got it pretty good. Oh, I love it. This isn't oh. a spoiler. Cause this isn't the first like three minutes of the game. I love that. Buzz buzz is this like intergalactic super being. And he's killed by, if you don't know, he's like a bee that is there to like <laughs> help Ness figure out he needs to save the world. And he's like this all powerful being. And then he's killed by Pokey's mom squashing him. Cause she thinks he's a stink bug. I think that's fucking <laughs> hilarious. Just the idea that and like, he makes the comment about that too. He was like, I was taking a big risk here when I fought that big guy with you. And he's like, yeah, I just got squished. Yeah, and then, and then he's killed by, yeah, I just, if you've never played it, some of these jokes don't make sense. I think most of you have played it. It makes sense. I love this fucking game. Uh, Josh, despite my constant technical technical problems due to my inability to work my computer properly, uh, thank you for your patience and putting up with it and uh, talking Earthbound with me. I appreciate it. 
And uh, I'm sure I'll get you back on the show sooner than later. Oh, yeah, no, it's no problem. It was a good game, easy to talk about. <laughs> Easily. Oh, yeah. Do not look in mom's closet for presents because you could get in a lot of trouble. That's advice for everybody. So, no, right. I, I busted her when I was about 12. All right. Good stuff. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Thanks, buddy. All right. Yeah, no problem. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Josh, thank you so much for giving me a call and taking a trip down memory lane and letting me finally tell you the secret story of our Earthbound Origins uh, by talking Earthbound with me. I love this game and I like you. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot for doing that, man. I appreciate it. And to every single one of you nerds listening to this right now, whether this was your first to remember the game, maybe your 225th. Thank you so much for giving a chance, giving us a chance and uh, listening to our stupid show. I very much appreciate it. If you didn't hate it, leave us a nice review. We've been getting a lot of nice reviews lately and they make me feel good and warm and fuzzy inside. I appreciate those. And if you want more, <laughs> There's more. I, I know. You're like, what? I'm almost done. The I get a lot of messages from people being like, I'm working through the backlog. I'm working through the backlog. But when you're done the backlog, hit up patreon.com slash remember the game. Plunk down $2 and get over 250 bonus podcasts. Not any of the remember the games. Just extra podcasts. Just sitting there waiting for you. And in addition to that, you're going to get two extra episodes every single week as well. Um, plus all the other benefits that I ramble off at the beginning of the show. Uh, what else do I got to plug? Is that it? Oh, yeah, I'm on Twitch sometimes. Not a lot right now, but I will be back over there. Twitch.tv slash member the game. Just hit me with a follow. I'll never bug you for subs or anything. It's, you can just come by and hang out and see my dumb face. It's fun. Uh, I started playing WWF No Mercy on there the other day, and it was fucking rad, and I am going to play more of it. I just need to get through the holiday season of comedy, and then I'll be playing more WWF No Mercy over there on Twitch. So I'd like to see you over there, and um, I think that'll do. Oh, I have Let's Plays at YouTube.com slash Remember the Game if you're interested. I should plug those. All right. That's enough. I don't feel like plugging anything else today. Uh, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to thank some patrons as I'm contractually obligated to do. And then I'm going to wrap this thing up. Thank you all for listening. We'll, we'll be back tomorrow for all of our patrons uh, with uh, Adam, have you ever played? And I'll answer all your questions about whether or not I've actually played games. And next week will be my Sonic Frontiers review. I'll be back on Friday with Game Patch, all the biggest news in the world of video games. And I'll be back next week with Remember the Game number 226, which, if everything works out according to my master plan, will be about the action RPG Alundra for the PlayStation 1. All right? Enjoy the pod. Or, no, you did. Hopefully you enjoyed the podcast. Fuck, I suck at this. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Remember the Game is brought to you by our Patreons. I could not puke up all this quality content every week without all of your support. I said quality in air brackets, or air quotes, in case you couldn't see it. Uh, the following people have been suckered into signing up at the Senior Executive Vice President level or higher at patreon.com slash remember the game. And as such, I owe you all a celebratory shout out. Plus, you helped pay for Becky, my Miss Pac-Man cabinet that I love so much. So, from the bottom of my heart, a huge thank you to Makeshift Mellow Magic Money, Joe Buck, Sharonic, Andre, Amanda Hug and Kiss... <laughs> Why can't I find a man to hug and kiss? Maybe your standards are too high. Uh -huh. James Clark, King Bahamu, Dave McGee, DNA Gaming, Slick Rick, Doug Dorn, Chris Flurry. Oh, man, I love Barty. Charlie Medeiros, Andrew Wright, Jordan, Fraser Burns, Lil Bunny Fufu 89 Angry Ticks, Dave Thompson, No One Cares, Aaron Lawson, no Lawson Nathan Tromblay, A-Town, Morgan, Zane, Donovan, Ryan Kinchin, Mike Maloney, G9PSX, Mercury869, Wolfgang, Darren, Sam Wright, Andy Hudson, Doogie, Wolf Magic 21 Johnny CCDC, Joe LeBlanc, Squints, Titan420, Zonko504, Russell Aldridge, Jeff Bergeron, Captain N, OT Plays Games, Too Tired for Life, Tunable Power, John Woodruff, Randy B. Marriage, Just a Fish, DP Pooper, Denzalo, Holmes, Zach Shepard, Chris Dickin, Matthew D'Amico, Frosty Feet 492, Triple, Chugger 22, Elijah Burns, Stephen Parnell, Ray San Juan Tonga, DBXJ, Jameer Williams, Steve Dalk, Phil McCracken, Mizuru, Nicholas Chaffee, David Marcus, Len Phil Lencher, Ruben Elizald, Eric James, Riley Turvey, Jake Carter, Laces Out Dan, C Spin, Thomas Smith, Nicola, Munch Makuchi, Leroy Westrich, Jerry the 3D Printed Sausage, Russell, whose last name I can't say, and I'm stuck. I'm sick of fucking it up. Evolva, Sean Ramos, DB Cooper, Stud Still Smash, Mojo the Helper Monkey, Brant Hewitt, Gabe, Dan Fuselman, Fuzzy99, Decoy Man, John Jameson, Wyatt the Surgeon Row, Blaine the Hoagie Man, Scary Terry, Bucky the Beagle Herder, Edridge FPV, Hagel, Waffle, High Plains Drifter, KS. 
Hatch, Jimothy, Joe Stone, Chris Williams, Oroku Saki's Gardner, Nicole Novak, Cody Richardson, General Fury, Dead Boys on the Roof, current Remember the Game Hall of Famer Mark McHugh, James Juan Francesco, John of the Adult Children Podcast, Matt Hamilton, Nomad, Daniel DeVore, James Black, Drugs of Bad MK, Sam Carpenter, Nerdy Hybrid, Adam Fletcher, Colin Bollinger, Pinball Mage, Joey Mercury, Theorand, Squeak Nuts, Isaias, Timmy the Exuberant Turtle, Brian Neese, Christian Gabriel, Maverick Marty, Musty Beetle, Bud Lightyear, Beef Dingleberry, Ma Michael Barjudina, Hitchy Poo, Arctic Vision, Romaldo Marquez, Bulma Simp, Mark But Not McHugh, Trevor McKee, I'm Getting Lightheaded, That's Not a Patreon, Cam Nelly 23, Zamato, Skillerooney, Angelo Leonardo, Lugnut, Scott Wee, So oh My God It Froze, Bobby Litton, Brandon Dezeba, Roger Russell, Kia Puff, Knife Goes In, Guts Come Out, Works For Me, McGrathen, Heman Demon, James Sanabria, Derek Carx, Dakota Guy, Alexander Camps, Toad Spit, Ryan Perry, Alex R, It's the Bigfoot, Graham, Ichi Nutsuru, Mr. Papa Giorgio, John Drew, Solomon Soto, Dar Skywalter, Denton Van Zan, Postman, West Gen, Nick Creature, Hatrick Swayze, Adam Martinet, Naf E, Dr. Nightmare 23, Tone Bone Swiss, Kevin Monroe, The, Sh the Stone Shooter, Whew, Shorzy, and Long Lord Longrod Von Hugen Dong the Second. I still don't think that's a real fucking name. Thank you all so much for the support. Purple Monkey Dishwasher. Oh yeah, quickly, somebody asked where that comes from. I get asked that a lot. Uh, it's a Simpsons bit. Uh, well, that we'll just see about. Or basically, yeah, just Google, girl, Google it. Google Purple Monkey Dishwasher and see what comes up. All right, thanks everybody. Talk to you on the next one. Cheers.